Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Well, here we are on episode 301. Fantastic that we got so much love and support on episode 300. Thank you guys for uh, leaving some lovely comments on that one. I was really, really happy with the response to it. Probably not going to do any more 360 degree video for a while. It was a bit of an experiment, but if you haven't seen that episode, go back and check it out. I think you'll find it kind of interesting. And apologies to everybody who had a smart TV and couldn't really watch the video very well. I don't have a smart TV myself, so I didn't really know what was going to go on with those. But anyway, today, because the next big episode that I think a lot of people are excited about is going to be episode 303, where I will attempt to answer 303 questions about Minecraft and yes a post is up all about that video on my community page on my YouTube channel so you should check that out if you haven't already lots of questions there that I'll be sorting through very very soon in between the episode 300 tour and 303 questions I wanted to do some cool stuff with transforming some more Minecraft structures because we've already kind of done that with the ski village that I started building to replace the uh, snow plains village that was over there at my mountain project. And today I thought I would go out into the world and tackle another one. And it is a structure that I have seen since I started playing this game. It's been in the game for a very, very long time. And I feel like it needs a little bit of love and a little bit of a makeover in this world. So I have got myself a ton of stone. <laughs> We've got that there. I've got a ton of other materials in here. In fact, that is, yes, more stone. Uh, I'm not going to use the dark oak logs for this. They're just along for the ride in that shulker box but this box here is perhaps the most important one because in this we have a whole lot of mossy stone bricks a little bit of made up stone brick already lots of vines so we can make more mossy stone brick some mossy cobblestone some andesite and some polished andesite i'm also going to bring along a stone cutter with me in the ender chest from over here we should have a stone cutter in whichever one of these my village box is can you guess from the block palette we have already where we're gonna go i wonder if you can and i think the answer will not surprise a great deal of you if you have seen previous videos of mine where i've talked about this structure before but we are going to be heading out probably about four or five thousand blocks in that direction i'm taking a bed with me because this is going to be a slightly longer project and i'll see you guys when we're over there Welcome to the jungle. We have got fun and games, but more importantly, we have jungle temples. Congratulations to anybody who'd already guessed we were going to be making over a jungle temple today. Probably something about that in the thumbnail or the title of the video, I would imagine. So I, I don't know why I set up these questions so early in the videos. But yes, here we are back in the jungle and somewhere around here... I believe there was a, yep, there we go, a jungle temple actually right on the border of this plains biome next to a birch forest, which is a pretty good start because it means I don't have to clear a huge amount of jungle terrain in order to build the thing we're going to be building today. But first of all, let's review what we know about jungle temples, which, to be honest, there is not a great deal to know about jungle temples. They are generated structures that form in a, I think, a variety of shapes. They typically look more or less like this squat uh, cobblestone buildings with a little bit of mossy cobblestone a few vines growing here and there and an entrance on one side as you come into this entrance you notice this kind of upstairs floor up here which doesn't really have anything remarkable about it a downstairs section here which has a redstone puzzle you can see we've already exposed this one from a while ago because you can just open up the area behind these levers if you don't want to solve the puzzle and that set of levers there will actually unblock the entrance to it in here allowing you to access the chest down there now around the corner here of course we have the infamous dispenser traps activated by tripwire hooks in the walls which activate these redstone lines which are not particularly concealed in the structure as far as the structure goes but those will activate dispensers which will shoot out regular arrows not even arrows of poison or arrows of harming or anything a little bit unusual like that nope just bog standard arrows in these jungle temples and i think these things are naturally kind of a classic structure they're something that people know and love about minecraft but i think they are an example of wasted potential as far as the aesthetics of them the way they could look sat here in the jungle surrounded by all this lovely foliage and some of my favorite mobs in the game <laughs> the little ocelots are around of course but yeah we are going to give this jungle temple a makeover today and we are going to do that mainly by using some slightly nicer blocks and a slightly nicer layout i think there are some real world inspirations that we can draw from some step pyramids from 
South American ancient civilizations, for example, spring to mind, we can do some fun stuff with jungle temples, which is going to mean maybe clearing out an area back here. First of all, it's going to mean taking down this jungle temple, though, and we are going to make the footprint of this thing a lot larger, but hopefully capture the same spirit of the jungle temple. So without further ado, let's take down the temple. Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little time lapse and uh, if you wanted to see all of the blocks that go into a jungle temple, this is it in the top half of the chest here. So much mossy cobble and regular cobblestone, a few chiseled stone bricks and stuff like that, a few cobblestone stairs of course. All the rest of this is the stuff I've been clearing from the jungle around the outside so we can have a slightly different spot to work with for our new jungle temple redesign. But as far as economy of blocks goes, there are actually very few different blocks going into this. It's mainly the mossy and the cobblestone, of course, and then a few things for the mechanisms you'll find inside the temple. So we're going to be using a bit more block variety this time around, even though I've mostly brought stone with me. The stone cutter is going to be one of the most important things, because as we know about the stone cutter, you can use it to transform stone into a variety of things, including chiseled stone brick straight from regular stone and stone stairs in a one for one ratio, meaning that you don't have to worry about putting in six blocks and only getting four stairs out. You actually get one for one conversions, which is going to be super nice to have. It will help us save on materials and it should also be kind of useful when it comes to creating some of the slightly rarer materials, like we're going to be making a lot of stone brick into mossy stone brick and then converting those into mossy stone brick stairs and possibly some slabs here and there as well. So the stone cutter is going to be invaluable. In fact, this, uh, this whole episode is more or less going to be a love letter to the stone cutter. So we're going to head down here and we're, we're going to keep this area here open. We're going to be using a slightly larger area here to form the foundation of this step pyramid. So we're talking about the Mesoamerican pyramids here. We're talking about the Pyramid of the Moon or the Pyramid of the Sun, which are found at Teotihuacan in Mexico, and also the Probably the more famous example is at Chichen Itza. There is a structure called El Castillo, also the Temple of Kukulkan, 
which was prominent in the Maya civilization uh, in Yucatan in Mexico. But anyway, we're going to use those two structures as a kind of guideline in building our own jungle pyramid. It's going to be a step pyramid design with a few elements that I'm just throwing in there myself rather than modeling it after any specific structure. But I think this should be a wide enough space for it. And if it is not, I can always take down a few of these other you know trees and stuff around here, maybe level out the ground here and there as well. And this should be a pretty fun structure to build. So we're going to start off building this thing a couple of steps steps down but not quite at the lowest level that the ground appears here so we can sort of build up a base of the pyramid from there and we're going to have a row of stone bricks and then a staircase that leads up towards the central part of the structure so we're going to pull these out along here let's count how many we're doing just so i can keep track of this in my head one two three four five six seven eight let's go nine on this side and then i think uh, no, let's go 11 on this side just to make it a little bit longer. And I think here is where we are going to start the staircase. And we're going to start that basically two blocks up from what we think of as ground level so that we can have a staircase that is fairly raised up and along the side of the structure like this, giving ample room on the side here for the staircase to be raised like that. And then we'll add another stair in here. And we are going to swap out a bunch of the stone bricks in this structure for mossy stone bricks, including the stone brick stairs here, just to give it the feel like it has been overgrown by some of the jungle foliage around here. We'll pop in some leaves and some vines a little bit later as well, although there's a tendency for the vines to grow kind of out of control, so we want to avoid that where we can. But I think we're going to make this section here actually a mossy section of the build. Let's start putting in stairs and stuff like that now so we don't have to do too much swapping around. And the idea here is that the moss is going to grow over over large parts of the structure. We're not going to just dot in the occasional block of moss here and there. It's actually going to grow a substantial part over the structure like this so that it grows in patches. The staircase heading up this pyramid is going to be three blocks wide, so we'll put in a few mossy and regular stone bricks there. And then on the opposite side, we're going to start filling in at the bottom here so that we can have the exact same line of the pyramid coming out on the opposite side in 11 blocks from the staircase itself. Now let's step back and take a look at this from above. Does that seem like a decent size structure? I think it does. Maybe we'll extend it a little bit in either direction. Maybe we'll include some staircases on the corners, which will broaden the base of the structure. But I think that's a good size to start with. Certainly starting out a little bit larger than the jungle temples that we are used to. We'll put another mossy patch on this side over here, and then we can start really building up the step structure of this pyramid, which is going to be very straightforward. All we need to do is come out one block from the back of the staircase there and then continue that along. So the staircase always has a block and then a stair visible on the side of it. So you know very much this is the area that you want to go up and you can't just hop onto the staircase from the wall. We're going to keep these moss patches going throughout the structure of the pyramid. We are going to dot in a couple of mossy stone bricks here and there just for variety, but we'll probably end up using more of them in large clusters than we do just these occasional blocks here and there. And from here, it's just a matter of building up this pyramid. The cool thing about structures like this is that they can be very straightforward in terms of the way you build them. It's just a lot of repetitive building and it means you end up with a nice easy pattern to follow. The other thing we're going to do that follows a slightly different pattern that deviates somewhat from the uh, Mayan step pyramids that I've been looking at is we are going to build in a couple of raised sections here. We're going to start these out with andesite like so, but then building up from those, we'll probably add a couple more stone bricks onto the structure like this, maybe three high, and then we'll add a chiseled stone brick to the top of that. And we're doing that three blocks out from the staircase. We can count along another three blocks and break that one. This is the advantage of having done this with a kind of odd numbered pattern like this. And then we'll put another one there. We'll do another pillar here like so, and add a chisel brick on top of that. We could even vary the heights of these if we want to, but that will give a structure to this that sort of feels like it's inspired by Minecraft's own jungle temples a little bit, which I kind of like. I like the idea of these sticking up every few blocks back in the structure, and it will certainly give this thing a little bit more of a monolithic feel. So the task now is just going to be to build up sections of this as we go, and I think after a few sections, maybe we'll add another set of pillars, and then we'll add a doorway that can be our entrance into the entire thing. And once we square this whole thing off, of course, it's going to look much larger than the Jungle Temple did and will hopefully stick out even more, which is going to be really fun to see once we've filled in the jungle foliage around the outside. 
And after building up a couple more layers, this is where we're at with it. And I think this is the time where we're going to start building an entrance to the interior of the structure, which means building a couple of walls around the outside here just so the interior structure can be a little more contained. And what I think we're going to do is build a three high wall here. It's going to be right behind the second set of pillars, but that should give ample room for the pillars to still stand out from the body of the structure. We're going to build this wall all the way along. And of course, here we're going to have some sort of entrance for people to come in. And I think we're going to do that with a stone brick archway, a fairly low archway still. We're working with more or less the proportions of the player as related to the jungle temples that we already had before. So I think we'll just build a nice simple archway over the top of this, maybe throw in some mossy stone brick here like that. And yeah, that's not looking too bad. In fact, maybe we pull the structure of this archway one block out as well. We'll remove that one and turn that into a regular full block of mossy stone brick there. I think it would be nice to have this thing stand out a little bit from the structure some more like so. Uh, maybe use some mossy brick there instead of the stairs. And yeah, I think that's going to stand out a little bit more and the wall can continue on behind those pillars. I think that's going to look good. So there we go. That is the first wall of our structure. And of course, the cool thing is we can just hop up onto the top of this section and start to repeat the pattern that we had from the bottom part as we continue to go up. So it can have a second stage of steps to this pyramid. We're just going to pop the wall in behind here like so, and then making sure we have one block Going up from there, we're going to start another staircase and we can start the same step pyramid pattern a second time and maybe even include an upper entrance or a kind of balcony platform where people could come out and stand up here if they are able to climb the interior of the structure. But I think we can just continue this pattern of stairs on upwards and it's going to look pretty impressive once it's done. Well, after a little bit more work, I've got to say I'm really liking the way this has come together. This whole thing looks so much more organized than a jungle temple and has a nicer texture in my my opinion. I don't really like the cobblestone being everywhere in a jungle temple and in fact I'm not super keen with having the entire thing be stone brick which is why I kind of want to put together a little bit of texture in this using some andesite and some stone just to imagine that over time this temple has been worn down a little bit and andesite and stone are perfect for adding a little bit of age detail into structures which are mainly made out of stone brick like this kind of allows it to feel a little bit more worn down over the years. So let's pull out some of the stone brick here and there and add in patches of andesite and stone. Just a couple here and there just to add a little bit more texture or remove a little bit of texture, I suppose, from the structure should look quite good. And then we're going to need to figure out exactly how this structure is going to wrap around to the next side. And it is going to have to be wider, of course, at the base, because as you look at it right now, the pyramid steps upwards and inwards but of course, it's not going to be able to do that if we just create a flat wall starting here. So I think we do need to figure out where the pyramid structure of this is going to go, which means the base is actually going to be a little bit wider than we started with originally, which is fine by me. The pyramid at Chichen Itza, the uh, El Castillo, is actually like 53 meters wide at the base, 53 meters square, meaning that that's, you know, 53 blocks in Minecraft. That's pretty long. So I think we have some room to work with here. Just needs to expand outwards and remove some more of the jungle foliage around the outside before we can lay some of that stuff down. And I think we might end up just removing this entire hill over here. For now, though, we are going to keep distressing the walls with some of this andesite and stone and I'm thinking about what we want to do with the interior of this if we want it to be more of a labyrinth if we want to include some of the you know blow dart traps that are in the previous jungle temples with the dispensers full of arrows we might be able to include some stuff like that but personally I'm just really happy with the outside of this structure I think it stands out really nicely here in the jungle sometime later I have the transition from one side to the next worked out using a few stairs here to kind of make this a more triangle angular kind of sticking out section on the sides leaving of course a little bit of a gap for the wall there I think this is looking pretty good and I've come up with a couple of different variations as we go from side to side I do want to put some more mossy stone brick in here and I maybe want to have some of these pillars here and there be ruined and lying on the ground maybe just put a stair in place of one and then have a stair attached to one of these chiseled stone brick blocks just lying on the ground nearby as though it is broken off and kind of snapped halfway up maybe or some of the bricks have come loose or something like that but around here this is one of my favorite little details instead of just blocking off this wall we can imagine that some of the roof of the room behind it has fallen through and has just kind of created this rubble that is blocking the entrance this could be a really neat feature stopping players from just going in one side of the jungle temple and allowing them 
to only come in from one entrance. Of course, you can mine your way through the walls, but features like this would allow it to feel like a complete closed off labyrinth on the inside and control the experience of the player making sure they only come in through one entrance which is something that the current jungle temple already does but i think it'd be kind of cool to just make sure they come in through one entrance or the other i think there might be another entrance right at the top as well in the same way that you can fall down through the center of a desert pyramid but these jungle pyramids deserve a little bit of love in that respect as well I think I'm probably going to stop doing these kind of corner sections of the walls on the next level up because looking at it from here, this is actually going to be a pretty wide platform at the top here. I've only done two sides of the structure so far. But I think what we might do is have another set of stairs going up to a final square section at the top and maybe have some square towers sort of lower down on a flat platform at the top of this level here. That would prevent us from kind of copying the same pattern over and over, up and up, and I think it could lend some nice variety to the structure while still providing some regular patterns that we can work from. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time doing this, and you know what, with the sun going down over there, I think we might do it in the form of a time lapse.
Hey folks, welcome back, and with the second of our two time lapses completed, the Jungle Temple redesign is done. I think of this as sort of a reimagining of the Jungle Temple, really. It's so much bigger than I was expecting it to be when we started out, but I really like the way this turned out. And we still have to do a little bit of terrain, naturalizing to make sure that it fits into the landscape quite well. And the other dirty secret that this thing has is that unfortunately, I haven't finished the foundation yet. On this side, it is completely exposed to the air. And it's a good thing too, because there are mobs galore inside of here. I haven't even started laying in the traps yet, and already this thing is a death trap, ladies and gents. We have so many mobs down there in the shadows underneath the temple, and I am not willing to tangle with any of them right now because we are running out of time for this episode. I decided to do a little bit more detailed look at the building process this time around which leaves us a chance in the next episode to discuss how exactly we are going to work on some traps for this thing. Again, in the spirit of the original Jungle Temple, I want there to be a couple of tricksy redstone things in here that are really going to throw players for a loop and it's probably one of the few times I will cover stuff like traps in this series because often on multiplayer servers, you know, traps and that kind of like casual pranky griefing kind of stuff can get common and I want to steer away from that for this series, not least because I don't really have anybody to prank in a single player world, but also because I'm not really a huge fan of that kind of behavior myself anyway. But I figure we can do some cool stuff on the inside of this that's going to help the lore of it and it's going to help it feel a little bit more like the jungle temple we are planning to redesign with this whole project. But let me take you through some of the upper layers of this, which I kind of designed on the fly as I was time-lapsing the rest of this, and I'm pretty proud of how they turned out, actually. I wanted there to be a box-like structure at the top, kind of like the El Castillo at Chichen Itza, but I wanted to have that supported by several other structures because the staircase is kind of steep there, and I didn't want to adjust the angle of the staircases that we have down here by making them out of slabs. Instead, I thought it was going to be kind of fun to build these sort of more monumental looking structures around them. And I really like, even though it's a flat wall, how much texture we get out of just swapping in some andesite, some raw stone, and then the polished andesite and granite pattern around the top there really kind of accents the area where the roof line is in a nice way. And we also have an emerald block sitting in the archway above each of those. And from here, it does kind of look a bit like a Muppet face, <laughs> which I kind of enjoy. And believe me, that emerald block could very easily be the subject of one of the areas we're going to trap. I can think of some devious ways of punishing players who dare to take the emerald block out of these archways. So I feel like we could have some fun with that in the next episode. But we've also got these little fire embrasures, I guess they would be called, these kind of little fire pits around the outside that are just granite blocks and granite stairs. All raw granite, except around the back where I sort of ran out of raw granite and couldn't be bothered to find any around here. But it's uh, a campfire under each of these, of course, allowing smoke particles to drift up into the sky. If we put a hay bale underneath one of those, of course, they could drift up even further. And that could be a nice, easy signal to players that one of these jungle temples was out there in the jungle if they couldn't spot it from a distance anyway, because this thing is truly monolithic. It towers over all but the tallest of the jungle trees in this area, and it really does stand out amidst all the trees. I like it a lot. And we could probably do some more with, you know, adding leaves around the structure and making it look a little bit more overgrown but for now i'm happy with it just sticking out here and being inviting enough to go in and enter it we could make a labyrinth inside of there and i think that's what we'll do in the next episode so look forward to that but in the meantime that is going to be it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide and i do hope you've enjoyed this look at a redesigned jungle temple maybe you want to try something like this in your worlds send me screenshots on twitter at Pixorift if you do. But for now, leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, bye for now.